In Elden Ring, you can get the armor set of Primeval Sorcerer Azur. This guide will cover most steps required to get it, starting in the open world. Prerequisites that are not covered in this video are shown on screen now, and there will be some spoilers for selling the Sorcerer's questline, as is required for the guide. Also, feel free to make use of the timestamps I put in this video's description to skip ahead if necessary. First, you'll want to go to Waypoint Ruins in Limgrave and meet Selen the Sorcerer if you haven't already. Agree to learn under her tutelage and exhaust all of her dialogue. Next, you will need to acquire the legendary Comet Azure Sorcery. To reach the area where it's located, a secret method of transportation to Volcano Manor will need to be utilized. Start by traveling to the Schoolhouse Classroom Site of Grace at Rhea Lucaria Academy. Now that we're at the schoolhouse, we can move on to the hidden path, which will require dying, so you'll want to ensure that you have little to no ruins on your person before starting. Starting at the site of Grace, head back outside to the giant rotating lifts. Make your way to the opposite side where the lifts can be ridden down, hitch a ride and wait till the lift drops you off at the bottom. There is a long tail cat talisman you'll want to grab real quick, it grants immunity to fall damage, though I'll be honest, it doesn't seem to work for me. Then, counterintuitively, we are going to try and get the abductor here to snatch us up and snack 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 on us, and you have to die specifically to that animation slash move. Now again, this will kill you, but not to worry, you'll reappear in what appears to be actual hell. From here, make a mad dash along the same path you see me taking in the video to arrive at a site of grace. Be careful as the enemies here can hit very hard and there are lots of falls you need to make along the way. Once at the site of Grace, continue onward to face your abductors. These two abductors are serious business, but can be cheesed with ranged spells or weapons by climbing up this boulder, where you can mostly stay out of range from their attacks. Assuming you defeat them, rest at the site of grace before heading outside into another new area. Another site of grace can be found below, and from there, head north down the ravine, avoiding the steam plumes along the way. After a short time traveling, you'll see a flame light up near a rocky alcove. This is the entrance to Seathwater Cave, and a stone sword key will allow you to access the Site of Grace inside. From there, you'll need to head further west along the ravine. After passing the Seathwater Terminus Site of Grace, You'll want to turn left and start heading south around a lake of lava where a dragon normally resides. Following the natural path, you should eventually start heading east and then north after passing the Craftsman's Shack site of grace. The last location you'll have to pass through is the Demi-Human Village with a boss near the end named Demi-Human Queen Maggie. If you're quick, you can slip past this boss and rest at the site of grace on the other side, named Prime Evil Sorcerer Azur. Nearby, you'll find the famed sorcerer. Speak with him to acquire the legendary Comet Azur Sorcery. 
With Comet Azure in hand, head to Selen at Waypoint Ruins and introduce yourself if you haven't already. Then show her the sorcery. This will prompt some special dialogue. Continue speaking to her until exhausting all dialogue options. One of those should be a request to find another primeval sorcerer by the name of Lusat. Lusat is in a hidden location trapped behind a magical seal and Selen will give you a seal breaker to dispel that barrier. With the seal breaker in hand, head to the Celia hideaway in Kaelid. The entrance to this dungeon is in a rock wall north of the Church of the Plague. It's obscured by an illusory boulder that will fade when struck by an attack. I'll show the quickest path to reach the seal which is in the largest cavern area of the hideaway, but there are other things to do at this location so keep that in mind. After chopping through some illusory walls that I've already taken care of, we'll enter the first large cavern and then make our way partway through it. Eventually, we'll use some of the jutting crystals to carefully travel to the bottom floor. There will be a sorcerer down here guarding the magic seal. After defeating him, approach and interact with the seal to dispel it and gain access to Lusat. Speak with him and he won't say much, but he will give you his legendary sorcery, the Star of Ruin. Once again, return to Selen and tell her about Lusat. Continue speaking with her and she will eventually request your aid on an important task. We'll need to travel to the 4th Church of Merica in the Weeping Peninsula and then make our way down to Witchbane Ruins. Inside you'll find the true body of Sorcerer Selen. Her body is trapped and she needs you to take her primal glintstone slash soul to a new body. Agree to do so and then we'll travel to where this new body is located which is near Rani's Rise. Now in order to reach Rani's Rise, you'll first need to make your way all the way up north to carry a manor and then fight your way through the manor grounds to reach the other side. From the gates, travel inside the manor and stick along the left wall until you reach the structure where the manor lower level site of grace is located. Then travel along the top of the bridges to reach the upper level site of grace, and from there you can pretty easily reach the royal moon gazing ground. Here you'll find the only real challenge that you actually have to overcome in this area, which is royal knight Loretta. After defeating her, you can move out into the fields where Rani's Rise is located. From the entrance to her tower, head northeast and stop at the first ruins you see in that direction. On the ground, there is a false floor that will fade away when hit. Descend into the chamber and hit another false wall on the other side to reveal a second chamber, this one containing the new body that Selen had stowed away. Transplant Selen's primal glintstone into the new body and then speak with her until all dialogue has been exhausted. Next, we'll need to speak with Jaren at Redmain Castle, and this will need to be done after defeating Star Scourge Radon. Jaren can be found up in the church where the Radon fight is initiated. Speaking through all of his dialogue, he'll mention that he's leaving to tend to some unfinished business. After that, travel back to the Witchbane Ruins. There, you'll find Jaren and a bloodied corpse of Selen's previous body. Again, you'll want to speak with Jaren until he's gone through all of his dialogue. Getting near the end here, the next step will require that Renala, Queen of the Full Moon, has been defeated. From the Rea Lucaria Grand Library Site of Grace, head outside to find two summoning signs on the ground. One is gold and the other is red. If you take the red sign, you'll be summoned to assist in the defeat of Selen the Sorcerer, but for our purposes, we'll want to use the gold summoning sign to help defend her from Jaren. Defeat Jaren and then speak with Selen in the Grand Library, going through all of her dialogue. After that, sit back down at this Site of Grace and Selen should vanish. At this point, we should be able to get the armor. Go back to where Azur was first found, which is easy because there is a Sight of Grace right next to him. Instead of Azur, you'll find his armor sitting on the ground, waiting to be picked up. The helmet in this set, Azur's Glintstone Crown, increases the damage dealt by Azur's Primeval Sorceries. Comet Azur is the only example of an Azur Primeval Sorcery that I'm aware of. 
and the one downside is that this sorcery will cost more FP to cast. If you want to see more great Elden Ring guide videos, you can head over to my channel, and if you're new, consider subscribing. You're helping me feed my cat. Her name's Marshmallow. Have a great day if you're here today. Have a great Thursday, and as always, thanks for watching.